scripture this morning is taken from James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city and spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it sins. May the Lord has blessed this reading and hearing of his holy word. Church is a little different this morning. Instead of just going right to the sermon, we have a time capsule, which I am uh, very excited to open up. This was sealed up ten years ago by uh, some of our youth that, that came to uh, Sunday school back then. So, a time capsule from ten years ago. Not open until September 14th. We passed that date, didn't we? What is today's date? Is it 15th? Okay. So we've got an awesome date by one day. All right. September 14th, 2013. So I thought in the beginning we'd just spend a little bit of time seeing what was placed inside this time capsule. Um, all right, so the time capsule looks like we have uh, the, the youth who put it in here. Emily Hankinson, John and Scott Kaiser, Ashley Hillwig, Brianna Garrison, Abigail Drum, Eric Gamble, Shelly and Shane Benzel. Did we say Ashley Hillwig? Yeah. Rhonda Benzel, Emily Sloganoff, and Tisa Benzel. So quite a few youth back there um, putting in there. So I'll just tell you what we have here. This is Brianna Garrettson. I have her phone number and address if you would like it, or at least from 10 years ago. Um, and questions, number one, my career focus. What would she like to be 10 years from now? Teacher or lawyer? I expect my education will include a college degree. The main goal I will accomplish is to, question mark. I would like to live in a house or a cabin, and I will be driving a Beetle convertible. Okay, well she was driving a Beetle. Isn't that what she was driving? Except she flipped it this week and it was totaled, so um, no. I don't think she made the deadline. <laughs> All right, she's fine, by the way. She, she, she was not interested in it. Emily Hankinson. My career focus or occupation will be a teacher, doctor, or waitress. That's <laughs> a little bit of difference in career there, okay? I expect my education will include college. She doesn't have a main goal to accomplish. I will be living in a log house, yeah. and I will be driving a blue convertible. That does sound like Emily. She still doesn't have her license yet, though, so I'm pretty sure she's not driving a blue convertible. Okay, Rhonda Benzel, my career focus or occupation will still be a caregiver. I expect my education will include none. The main goal I have to accomplish is to be a better person. I'll be living in Shakora, and I will be driving a Cadillac. Abigail Drum, career focus will be a teacher. Education will include high school. I will be living in a home, and I'll be driving a Jeep. I think they have a Jeep, don't they? Yeah, very close. <laughs> Ashley Hillwig, my career focus or occupation, my career focus or occupation will be a pediatrician. I expect my education will include college in California. <laughs> The main goal I have to accomplish is helping others and being, being a nurse. I will be living in the country, big property, built house, huge yard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will be driving a 2013 new Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and she will be married when I'm 23. How old was she? Okay, so she's, a, she's ahead of time, but behind on the Mercedes, I think. <laughs> okay, Shelly Kaiser, my career will be a bus driver. I expect my education will include computers. The main goal I have to accomplish is to be healthy. I will be living in East Brady, and I will be driving a Volkswagen Passat. Is that what Shelly drives? <laughs> All right, Scott Kaiser did not have very good handwriting 10 years ago. 
Um, his career focus or occupation, he, he believed he would still be in high school. Um, <laughs> he did graduate, um, so all right, he's ahead of the goal on that. Um, and the main goal I have to accomplish is to be an archaeologist. <laughs> Eric Gamble, career focus or occupation will be a chef. Expect my education will include a high school diploma. The main goal I have to accomplish is to pass high school. <laughs> I will be living in a house and I will be driving a truck. Yeah, that's Eric, nice and simple. Straight to the point. All right, Shane Benzel, my career focus. <laughs> my career focus will be a pharmacist or to own a lawn care business. <laughs> I expect my education will include college. The main goal I have to accomplish is to buy a brand new vehicle. I will be living in, uh, build a big five-stall garage and live on top of it. Um, okay, so he's gonna buy a brand new vehicle, but he will be driving a 1995 Jeep Cherokee. John Kaiser, expect my high, uh, education will include a high school diploma, I will be a football player, will be living in a house and driving a Dodge. Okay, Ashley Hill will be included a Band-Aid. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't look used, so don't worry. Alright, we've got... Emily Slogginoff. My career focus will be an animal trainer. I expect my education will include animals and everything else. The main goal I will have to accomplish is make lots of money and work with animals. I will be living in a dorm or apartment with my mom. I will be driving a Honda Pilot. Probably not. Okay. Tisa Benzel. My career focus occupation will be a nurse. My education will be an associate's in nursing, bachelor degree in nursing. The main goal I will have to accomplish is to get married and start a family. I will be living in a trailer with a newlywed husband. I will be driving a GMC Sonoma or a Honda CRV. She is the nurse. Okay. The Scotty an archaeologist? No. Okay. <laughs> Close. Sandra Guthrie. <laughs> My career focus or occupation will be to be involved in some way in the healthcare profession. Congratulations. I expect my education will be to further my computer skills. How'd that go? <laughs> okay, the main goal I have to accomplish is retire hopefully in 10 years and enjoy my grandkids. That didn't happen <laughs> I'll be living in my present home. Okay, it's like 50% so far. Oh, here we go, you got this one. I will be driving a brand new 2013 Chevy whatever. <laughs> so that one go. Because you wrote it after that, yeah right, I'll be driving a 2005 whatever. <laughs> oh, there you go, you're ahead of the, ahead of the way to that's awesome. Okay, the only other things I have in here besides those, I have a, a $2 bill that Emily Hankinson put in. I have pictures of Brianna and her friends. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna pass these around. <laughs> he can just look at this one while she's not here. And the only other thing I have is um, Scotty Kaiser put a new battery in here. And I like the way the Scotty thinks. He wanted to see if after 10 years the battery would work. Sandra actually told me ahead of time, this is how good Sandra's memory is. She said, I don't remember what's in there, but I'm pretty sure Scotty put a battery in there because he wanted to see if it worked. Um, so I tell you what, I brought a voltmeter. <laughs> so we can finally answer the question for, uh, for Scotty. Uh, a brand new battery will read at 1.56 or above. So we'll see what this reads at. Huh? 
that is completely dead. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to write a letter to write it back. <laughs> set aside a little bit of time to figure out and think about where you want to be in 10 years, what your life is going to look like in 10 years. And you can imagine big. You can imagine you'll be driving a, a, a 2013 Cadillac. I mean, you know, you can dream real big. Or you can imagine, you know, reasonable and imagine you're going to be driving a 1995G, you know. You can probably definitely accomplish that one. The, the 2013 might be a little bit more tough, but if you ask somebody to, if somebody asked you to, to fill out, if we were going to do one of these as a church today, and put down the different things of what your life is going to look like 10 years from now, what would you say? I mean, what would you write down on there? Probably hopefully still alive, right? I mean, that's a good start. Oh, 10 years from now, I'd like to still be alive. That, that's a good start, but, but if, if you were still alive, what would your life look like? I mean, what would you have accomplished? What would you be able to accomplish in the next 10 years? What would you put down on that paper and say, hey, I want to be here, I want to have done this, I want my life to look like this? Because if you wanted to accomplish it, where would you have spent your time then, I guess is a good question. Because in order to accomplish these things, like these things that they put down in the time capsule, time and effort had to go into uh, acquiring these things that, that they were looking for. You have to dedicate time towards achieving a goal. And before you go into putting all of your time into something that you would write down on the paper, first and foremost, you have to make sure, you'd have to verify if it was actually a worthwhile goal. You would. You would really want to say, okay, in 10 years I'd like to be here. Is that really something that I want to put all my time into? And that's why James 4 says, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a while and then vanishes. And James, he kind of has a point because, I mean, the long scheme, our lives, when you look at our lives, they're just a drop in a bucket. I mean, yeah, we, we make an impact here on earth, but, but definitely, definitely, in the long scheme of things, I mean, the earth's been around, uh, according to the Bible, for, you know, 6,000 years plus. If we even make it to, you know, 80 or 90 years, what, what does our life really accomplish in the long scheme of things? And I guess the answer to that question, what does our life accomplish, depends upon what you put your efforts into. It really does, because what you accomplish is based upon what you put out. Um, there are 168 golden hours in each week, 168 hours in each week. The average person will spend 56 of those hours sleeping. Some of you are under average, some of you are over average, but average is 56 hours. 24 of those hours we'll spend eating or personal hygiene, and about 50 of those hours we'll spend in working or traveling to work. That means there are only 35 hours left of flexible time. That's five hours per day that, that aren't already spoken for that you can decide what you want to do with those hours of the day. So you've got five hours a day to choose how you really want to make an impact on the world. You see, those are the hours that really make a difference and help you to accomplish amazing, amazing things before you die. The hours that are spent at work, I find you get, you get some money to you know, continue to survive. The hours you spend eating or sleeping, those are necessities. They don't really change the world. But the true meaningful lives are the lives that spend those five hours a day in some amazing way. And the question is, is, have you ever stopped to think about where you choose to spend those five hours? I mean, think about that. You've got five hours a day of flexible time, of free time, of time that isn't spoken for. Um, where do you spend those hours? Because if I were to follow you around and, and observe those five hours a day for ten days, I could tell you what is most important in your life. And you might not like it and you might not agree with it, but those hours, those five hours, they speak volumes to what is important to you 
what kind of impact you are going to be on this world. And when you think about it, those five hours for some surfing the internet or posting on Facebook is what I'm going to see as most important. For others, maybe it's watching television or reading magazines or books that, that's most important. For some people, hobbies, different hobbies are at the top of the list. Shopping might be up there for, for some others. But if I were to follow you for 10 days and, and watch you, I'm wondering how much of that time we would spend in God-related activities. I mean, really, did you ever think about that? How much of those flexible time is spent towards Him? I'm wondering how much of that flexible time would be spent in devotion to your family, in actual spending good quality time with your family. I read about a time management expert one time. He was teaching at a seminar for executives, and he placed a large, clear, open mouth jar in front of everybody, just this big, giant glass open mouth jar. And then he took six or seven big rocks, and he put them inside that jar. And he asked his execs, he said, is this jar full? And they nodded their head, and they said, yes, it's full. And then he took some pebbles, and he poured it in amongst those rocks. And then he said, is this jar full now? And they were catching on. They didn't shake their heads yes, because then he brought out some fine sand, and he poured that fine sand in amongst those pebbles, and it filled in the, in the spaces. And he said, is the jar full now? And some of them shaked their, shook their head. And he took a pitcher of water, and he poured it in, and it filled the entire area. Everything that was left was filled to the brim. And he said, is it filled now? And they said, yes. And he said, then what's the lesson about time management? And hands shot up, and all the people uh, agreed. They said, here's a lesson. No matter how busy you are, you can always fit more things into your schedule. And he said, that's completely wrong. He said, the real lesson here is, unless you put those big rocks in first, they'll never fit. Unless you put those big rocks in first, they will never fit in. And that's the question of the day. What are the big rocks in your life? We talk about this five hours a day. What are those big rocks in your life during those five hours a day? What are you choosing to spend your hours dedicated to? Because the old saying says, where your time is, so your heart lies also. So I'm asking today, what are your big rocks? What are those big rocks that you stick in the jar? Is it money? Is it fun? Are they hobbies or toys? Is it helping others? Is it giving time to God? Is it giving time to your marriage or to your children? What would you say are the most important things in your life? That, that's what we ask these kids to, to look at. And that's what I'm asking you to look at today. What are your big rocks? And would your time management agree with your mouth? Because you have to realize that if you do not put those big rocks in first, they don't make it in. Something else is always, always going to fill up the jar in its place. And the problem is, is that so many times we have our jars, we have our big rocks, but we let all this other little stuff go in first, and then by the end of the week, the big ones never even made it. Every moment is a gift from God that must be managed, must be managed wisely. And God doesn't simply want you to flounder through the day, hoping that you spend your time wisely. He wants you to plan it out first and foremost. What is most important to you? What needs to go in your jar first? And then allow all the other things to fill in around it. And that's why Paul says in Ephesians 5.15, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Folks, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that I am perfect in my time management, because I am not. I, 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 I waste time just like everybody else. But I will tell you something. I will tell you that it is not an accident that my God and my family are at the top of my list. I purposely chose them to be my big rocks. They are rocks that I chose a long time ago, and they are rocks that get placed in that jar before anything else. Regardless of whether I was a pastor or not, Sunday mornings, since, since I was young, have been a day that was a big rock that was set aside and stuck in my jar, because anything else, anything else was second place to that. Meaningful time spent every day with my wife, that's something that I try to stick in my jar on a daily basis. Helping those who need, who are in need, comforting those who hurt, being a good neighbor, putting others' needs before my own. Those are my big rocks. Those are the things that I decide are the most important in my life, and those are what go in my jar first. <coughs> I just want you to just I just want you to think today, what about you? What are your big rocks? 
I'm going to ask you, do you think it might be time that you put them in the jar first instead of just saying, this is what's important to me? Take the time and set it aside and put them in the jar first instead of waiting to see if there might be room at the end. I'm going to leave you with one final verse from today's scripture. It says this, verse 17. I heard it in a kid's sermon. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Hear that? If anyone knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. I'm asking you today, in light of our time capsule, in light of, of uh, a Sunday dedicated to making sure that our, our priorities in order, I'm asking you today just to spend a little bit of time figuring out what your big rocks are. What is most important to you? And then take the time to stick them in a the jar before anything else. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the life you've given us and the time that you give us to accomplish amazing things, God. But we ask that you would help us not to fill up our lives with all these, these little pebbles and the sand and the water, God. But instead, allow us to be, be people who are dedicated to placing the large rocks in first. Allow us to decide first and foremost what our time needs to be spent on, God. And allow us to be people who are committed to doing what it takes to getting our priorities in order. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.